Greetings, fellow Empyreans. I am Ashtarothy, the voice of New Eden, and it is January 4th, YC-126, and New Year, New Me! This is the Eve Universe Show! Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome if you're new. What is that chunk cut out? Hold on, what is that part? Uh, what is that part? Why, why is there a blacked out portion? What is this? Uh, that's weird. Oh, there it is. Got it. All right. Nailed it. How's it going, guys? Welcome to the new year. I am. I was going to stream on Christmas. Didn't. My son came home. It's been a chaotic uh, sprint since then. So I'm hit back. I'm here, you are here, we're all having a great time. Make sure to like the stream uh, if you haven't already. We uh, have a couple things to go over today. I do want to go over the monthly economic report, as you can see here. Um, but also, due to popular demand, uh, I've had a lot of positive feedback about my run with Kato Ash, my new player, from last year. <laughs> so... Uh, a lot of people like to see me deal with things from a new player perspective. And I have done this kind of reset from the beginning over and over again. But um, I don't really take it very much further past the career agents most of the time. So I was thinking that that is something that we could possibly do and just see how long this remains interesting. Um, so we're going to do the economic report today. And then we're going to share in some more of the adventures of Kato Ash, where hopefully I can show you guys some other, like, uh, you know, new player friendly stuff. It, what a vet would do if he was a, um, if he was a new player, as it were. The new player experience from a vet's perspective. I don't know, whatever. Either way. Let's go ahead and uh, how how have you guys been? Did anybody get anything really cool for Christmas? What's your favorite thing that you got for Christmas? A comment in the a comment below if you're not live. Did you get anything cool for Christmas? I got a uh, an Oculus or sorry a Quest Three. I did manage to uh, get my hands on one of those. It's very cool. Uh, oh, you got a pieces of carbon from your exploration site. And Danny got a mythical. Okay. I got to share with you guys a little bit of a story, okay? So, what would a vet do on a new account? Let's train uh, to 5 million skill, uh, SP because he's got another account to play. I mean, but the idea was is that, like, I don't. At any rate, uh, so... Contrary to popular accusations, I have been playing the shit out of Raid Shadow Legends because I really enjoy it. Not paid to say that anymore. Uh, but, um, so Danny, as has been said multiple times, were the, was the one that, like, got us all into Raid originally. So she's been playing longer than any of us. And while I like to complain about how bad of luck I got, uh, you know... Uh, I managed to get a few of my legendaries and all that stuff. And then I like, it came to my attention that Danny still had never had a legendary. So after Christmas was, was done and all that stuff, I scraped together some of my money. I was like, it's okay. I can eat ramen for the next week. And rather than buying myself a charge, charge pack to try to get myself a legendary, like I have in the past, I instead was like, you know what? I need Danny to have a legendary. So we got Danny a, a pack and she didn't get a legendary. Didn't get a legendary. But instead, she got a mythical, which is the first mythical amongst our entire group. Congratulations. Uh, that's awesome. How many arms does an E player have? Depends on the alts. Duh. But I'm an alpha, so the answer is two.
Oh, wait. <clears throat> Before we get too deep into the gameplay, I do want to go over the monthly economic report. We go over this every month or so. Um, I try to. Actually, I just realized I have not done my due diligence. So let's go ahead and go to the bottom here. I like to go to the tag for the monthly economic report. And then pick up like the month or two before it. <laughs> Disney Killer Small Arms. Uh, so that was December. Let's go with the like the three, four months before it. Just so we can compare things. Now, some of these charts are obviously time-based, which is great. But some of them are just like the snapshot of this month. So it's good to have other snapshots to look at. So, first and foremost, we can see on the general graph, uh, September is this line. So, October, November, December is basically from the fall-off point here onward. So, we can see that there's this drop-off throughout most of December. What happened here? Well... What probably happened here, you can see like this drop off all happened at the same time. This is actually mid November. This was the bump from people being given seven days of free alpha. Okay. So this is this gr great, uh, you know, stimulus of activity. Um, first in production and destruction, then, in, sorry, per first in mining and destruction, then shortly thereafter in production. Um, as Havoc is introduced, new stuff is brought into play, new, new ships are built, uh, the seven free, free days of Alpha is getting a bunch of people LP, an opportunity to do stuff. All that translates into a giant spike of activity followed by a fall-off. But we can see that the fall-off is still a lot higher than it was, uh, even back in September. So, and it's been, it's definitely on the way up. So it's the same as it was all the way back in like May of 2019. So we are seeing a level of productivity that we haven't seen until uh, since before the pandemic, reign of the Rockwell time period, right? And in fact, um, mining... Uh, Destruction and mining. No, sorry, destruction. So here's the good thing. Check this out. That's the reign of the rope wall. Look at how much more mining was being done by then. And look at how much production was being done by then. Okay? So 2 trillion in mining, 5 trillion in production. If we go here, we can see that it's almost half of the mining. Uh, just about half of the mining. And the same if not more production you want to talk about why costs are higher right now uh than it was in the rain roll, roll call but is this a bad thing absolutely not what we're really seeing here is how toxically bad for the game the rain of the roll call was look at that look at all that extra mining compared to the production compared to now much healthier place and then we can also see from these charts that the balance between the different security bands hasn't really changed that much in production, but uh, we see this tick down in high sec destruction and tick up, big tick up in low sec destruction, uh, thanks to Havoc. And mining is roughly the same with an uptick in wormhole, or sorry, in null sec chewing out of the wormhole production or mining next we can see okay so this is one of the ones that we like to check between different ones Pochfin, we have 1.78 trillion in destruction whereas before we had uh 1.9 and 1.7 and 1.6. So it was lower in September, October, 
November, we see an uptick in destruction in Poshvin. And then this month, we see it fall back down to the previous levels. Okay. Let's see what we if we have any big outliers. What about... Um, is there anything that might actually be interesting to look at? Well, the silent. Yeah, that's up a little bit. Hard to say. What about what about mining in Watchman? Point three versus point two. So mining is up. Destruction is down. Mining is up. A bunch of Care Bears in there. Asteroids volume over time mining. So here we see, again, much more clearly, this big spike in almost exclusively high-sec ore being mined. This spike in high-sec ore being mined happened because of the November update, a bunch of free alphas, and then it falls off again. But it does recover a little bit. But we are pretty much on an overall even level of asteroid volume mined over time in pretty much all of 2013 we are a little bit higher up uh than we were before and it looks like most of that gain comes from nullsec you know we about halfway through the year we see a recovery of nullsec mining and now it's a much higher uh, amount whereas high sec is basically the same asteroids mined over uh by region this is always an interesting one so we can go and look here and see that Delve had four and a half billion and now has almost five. So Delve is mining more than before at uh, half a billion more with Sync Li Liaison next at under three. And it went, Sync Liaison went from being, oh yeah, Sync Liaison didn't change very much because look, it's at just over three right now. However, Lone Trek Forge and Metropolis uh metropolis was at three basically three three and a half three point six three point four and three point one or so whereas now we have uh metropolis is under three all of those three are under three um so that's the fall off you can see here that um this means that the Metropolis and Forge, all of this extra ore that we don't see in this month, that is this high sec mining number falling down, right? That those are the same stats. Gas mined over time. Uh, we see here that uh, we do get a big spike in November. It, this is likely potentially in relation to the Deathless event and stuff like that. Uh, and, you know, we did see a recover. So, like, it drops off because of the Halloween event, and then it recovers up, and then it drops off again during the Christmas event, but not as much as it was. In fact, even during the Christmas event, gas huffing was at basically an all time or a, a, an annual high point uh, overall. With and But here's the interesting thing we can notice that the vast majority of that comes from null sec mining so we see that uh the ice sorry the gas mined in high sec hasn't changed the gas mined in low sec hasn't really changed uh the gas in null sec did get a spike up because of the free to play but we can see overall there is more high uh, null sec mined and more sorry that's wormhole more more high null sec mine and some a little bit more wormhole mine for gas gas volumes by region veil of the silent placid iridia iridia lone trek so veil of the silent went from 25 million under 25 million to almost 35 million so 40% increase in gas mined in Veil of the Silent in the last month. So, yeah, there, there, that probably is why we see a bit of that increase, even as it drops back down. 
Because not all that increase is coming from... Oh, no, no, that is null sec. Yeah, yeah, that's null sec. This red part that's being higher. <clears throat> and uh, it was Iridia at 35 million. Iridia has fallen to 30 million. Next, ice mined for, over time. Who is here after farming until the last minute? Oh, man. Did anybody finish? Uh, everybody finish their track? I did manage to finish my track in the end. Ice mined over time. We see in December. Again, we see this spike up because of havoc, and then it falls back down to a higher point than it was before the spike. That's at least mildly important. It also appears that the majority, if you look at this, the, the distance between this spike and this spike is similar to the distance between this spike and this spike, which tells me that a good enough chunk of the ice mind increase has been in high sec. Danny finished her track. That's right. Huzzah. Ice volume by region. This is going to be interesting. So remember, we just noticed that some of the ice mine was in high sec more. So let's see if we can see that in the numbers here. So the Forge, Forge Metropolis Evershore, Forge Metropolis Evershore, the Forge was at 3.25. Now it's at 3. So we actually see a drop in the Forge. Uh, but in Metropolis, it goes from 2.5 to almost three and in every shore we see a drop from uh two to almost three now it's probably worth noting that a fair chunk of this increase if you look at why this increase is coming so healthy it's happening in december i suspect that this is including ice mind for the event. And if that's true, that makes sense why the numbers are looking the way they do. Let's look at um, Essence, for example. Essence got 75, 0.75. Whereas before... Where is Essence? There it is. Essence got... And it's about the same. Maybe I'm wrong. I don't know. I don't know. Uh, moon or Mind over time. Uh, looks like it's been pretty even. This makes sense. So... Remember, you do not get the same spikes in Moon or Mind because Moon or mine is largely based on availability of moon ore i.e number of athenors burrowing at moons not the number of people who are willing to mine most moons get mined out completely which means you can double your population and unless you also double the amount of moons you're just going to mine out those moons faster not actually get more ore so we don't see a big change in that. It is a little bit up, but not enough to write home about. Oh, sorry. Wrong month. Yeah. It's actually not even a little bit up. It's 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 totally flat. Uh with number one being in Veil of the Silent, which is the way it was before at four and a half. It's actually up by uh, a quarter in Veil of the Silent. Whereas Delve went from three. Delve is also super up. Domain went down a little bit. Now, there has been a big thing, like, and I know Pirate has been running around blowing up a bunch of high ISEC structures, so it's possible that high sec Moon Ore is down a little bit, but it, and it does look a little bit like high sec Moon Ore might have gotten a little... Uh, it's a little bit chopped off of it and replaced by potentially null sec moon ore, but these are all relatively subtle differences, all things considered. 
These are just fun ways of charting things out and looking at the regions. Okay, economics. Let's see. So, imports and exports. In the last month, the top importer or exporter, exporters, yeah, exporters are positive. The top exporter is the Citadel, which is pretty crazy, actually, because that means that more things are being taken out of Jita than put into Jita, which if you think, or uh, I guess not, that's not Citadel, that's Forge, right? Yeah. Uh... Where is Citadel here? The problem with the way that they order things makes this... Ah, here we go. Citadel. So it was positive then, but it was 587 out, 602 in. We have... Or sorry, other way around. Uh, now we have... So we have 587 in to 562 in, and then 602 out to 600 out. So what we see is a lot less coming into the Citadel, but about the same amount going out of the Citadel. This is probably because, as we've seen in many of these different charts, we see this big spike in productivity, like mining and stuff, from last month. Well, guess what? All that ore has to go somewhere. All that stuff needs to get processed somewhere. So that's probably what we're seeing there, was that it got processed and then moved out. And as it got moved out, you know, the exports are still happening, but the imports, less stuff is being brought in because that happened last month. And so overall, it's, 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 it looks better. I think that's what we can interpret from that. Somebody can correct me if I'm wrong. Uh, here we have the forge at 718 and 582. And then we have uh, 679 and 549. So actually a lot of the same. Uh, so that's down by 40. And that's up by 30. So it's a little bit, it's a little bit the same story in the forge. But it's more even there. Can that or be from event? Uh, I don't think so. Because we're talking about ore from, like, November. And the uh, event stuff was mostly ice. Isk sinks and faucets. Always a fun one. Commodities, 61 million. This is going to be a good one. 56 million. So commodities are up by... Uh, 10% this month because of the event happening. Bounties. Thirty-six to forty-two. Bounties are are up by at least ten to fifteen percent. But let's see. Main bank auto payment. Eighteen point four to nineteen point eight. So yeah, not only do we see ratting going up bounty prizes going up which you would expect a, a chunk of that is going to be the event too but we also see main bank payments being going up i look for that because that is nullsec ratting in action so this does mean that there was an increase in nullsec ratting during the course of december in order for that to happen uh triglavian invasions payout went from 18 to 17 um, Sancho's incursions went from 13 to 14. Pirate fobs. This is an interesting one because they changed those, right? So 2.2 .2 to 2.5. It went up? Hold on. Uh, yeah, it's actually been pretty stable. So any rumors of there being less fobs than before or whatever seems to be untrue. 
Um, insurance is at 3.5, and it was at 3.5, so basically the same amount of destruction uh, worth of value. Reward payout. Oh, wait, we already did that one. Uh, House of Records is so G, you know, Caldari are still the best for home fronts, but it's pretty evenly spread, right? We've got House of Records, FBI, FIO, and MI, MIO all at 2.1 to 2.2. The only people sucking is the Republic Security Services. Poor Mimitar, no home fronts for you, apparently. Like almost like half of the reward total. Uh, Project Discovery is sitting at. Uh, wait, hold on. Yeah, 1.2. Which is the same. Um, and. Transaction taxes at 38 billion. That's holding to the same, too. Hold on a second. I am yeah okay these are I'm like these are different charts right so thirteen point three thirteen point six so LP taxes is a little bit lower so less people are buying things for LP which makes sense because there's a big Russian LP what's up Punch Punch is the hero of Raid Shadow Legends just so you know uh so. This is an interesting one, right? So we were going to, we, this is one of the ones I wanted to look at. This is the winter event last year. The winter event is historically, sorry, this is the winter event last year. Winter event is historically the best event of the year. Um, with the apex happening just after January. With here we see, once again, best of the year with the apex just after the line. So here we see that it's not quite as high, but it's also not past the line yet because we're not in Jan. This isn't January's report, so it may still go up, but it isn't as high, which I find very interesting. Um, because like the October one, if you look at the Halloween one versus this Halloween one, so much more of a difference. It's almost twice as much. But the Christmas event doesn't look, seem to be much better. I think that that's because, A, the Christmas event is always popular. B, this Christmas event, I think, was less popular than normal. There's been a lot of reports that there was less rewards than previous years. Normally, the Christmas event has, like, the highest of rewards of the year. So that way, everybody feels good about it. But we all know that the events team, or rather, the events have now been handed over to a new team. And that new team seems a bit stingier. So it's possible that um, there was less rewards. Uh, but either way, it does seem like there might have been less activity overall. But we won't know for sure until next month and we are able to see the second half of that spike. Uh, other than that, not really that noteworthy. Here are faucets and sinks over time. We can see that transaction tax is up a little bit. Skills and blueprints are up a little bit. This kind of tells me that there's a lot of people coming back to the game or coming into the game and getting things. Um, and, of course, that commodity spike. Uh, the commodity is going above bounties, which is always fun. <clears throat> Total money supply has actually dipped down a little bit in uh, from November to December. Uh, again, we're seeing, like, you can see where it spikes up and then goes down. This is that seven days of free Omega. Um, and so what we're really seeing is less a drop and more of, like, it adjusting to that change. In fact, we can even see it pivoting back up to the baseline uh, at the end. So that's cool. Velocity of ISK, very stable, um, although, you know, it is still higher than it was before the spike, and it's been at this, it's been pretty stable or a little high since, uh, for all of 2023. 2022 was obviously our low point, but the recovery seems to be pretty stable. 
uh, indices over time, you can see that everything has a little bit of an uptick at the very end. That That's a lot of that economic activity that came from Havoc. What's the difference between, oh, that's that's since 2004. This is snapshot since 2018. So we see a little bit more detail about those upticks, but yeah, it, it looks like things are going pretty healthy overall. Here we got, um, we can see that actually a fair chunk of the value uh, is coming from Tech One modules. Apparently Tech One modules are up and implants, which implants, of course, that kind of makes sense. Although I expected price to go down, but implants are selling. The mineral index uh, up across both paths, high and low. Is that it? Okay. ESS stuff. I don't really care about ESS stuff. Ah, here we go. Um, accessories are up. Everything that kind of matters is up. Including Starbase structure for some reason. Let's see. Planetary specialized. PI is a little bit down. Primary producer price index. Oh boy, here we go. Raw moon materials. That's a big increase in raw moon materials. And advanced moon materials. So most of this uptick is actually in raw and advanced moon materials. Which is kind of weird. Um, I wonder if that has anything to do with like the Athenors and the changeover of mining and how like moon mining shifted a little bit. But I'm not 100% sure. Um... There were a lot of T1 modules that were valued below their reprocessed mineral amount. That might be in part why the prices have gone up. Oh. Okay. So people are just buying them up and reprocessing them? That can happen. When there's a bad enough price inversion. Uh, okay. Let's see. This one's always fun. Let's play Spot the Difference in Wormhole Space. So we have... First, we're going to look at, uh, what is this? Blue loot. Thirteen four point nine. Thirteen five point two. So, thirteen point eight. So it looks like a little bit of class six blue loot has shifted to class five, but not that much. Um, and there's more in class four. Class 3 is basically the same. There's more in Class 2. So there's a little bit more. But it's a little shifted from 6 to the other ones. Gas. We see uh, 0 0.7.1, 0 0.5.1. So less gas in that Class 5. Negative 2... Negative one, not a huge amount of change. Uh, positive in three, which was the same place as that was lost. I, it looks like, yeah, class five just gained more than the others, I think. And then materials, we have eight and four. Five, eight and five, three, five, four, zero, two, four. So a lot more economic activity, a lot more economic activity as far as materials go out of class one and class two. So this could very well be Man, I want to say that somehow the event is causing people to day trip more. But I'm not even sure if that's true. It just seems like there's more mining being done in the low-class wormholes. Largest battle in Caldari State versus Galente Federation, Faction Warfare. Uh, 
You know what the worst part about this image is? The worst part about that this issue, this this image is, is that Fleet is blue right now. This makes me sad. But um, that said, this giant dot here is the Fleet brawl that we did in December. Uh, I was there, um, tethered on a structure mostly, <laughs> but because I didn't get, I couldn't get into the fleet right away um but yeah a lot of people had a lot of fun in fleet um there's a big brawl it was good times the amar mimitar war zone not so sure about that dot as much um but yeah and that is about it for the monthly economic report i feel like i'm getting a little bit better at doing these uh so please let me know if uh i got anything wrong if there's any thoughts comments questions concerns observations of your own please leave them in the comments down below but uh i have been ashrafi i've been playing this game since, since 2010 talking about it since 2012 and i'm here to put even to context for you my fellow empyreans thank you guys so much for coming and thank you of course to my top sponsors which are listed down below and my top supporters including abyssus ikawarzu chan Urkis earling Belligerent Neckbeard, Black Rose Noble, Dejat Lamont, Drake, Federation Frontline, Ganai, Jay Kuhn, Lumi, Midnight Space Monkey, Milk, Not Just Fun, Punchinello, Seeds of Plenty, Serenalin with No Eyes, Shodanar, Siliana Velesh, Tijen Tijen, Nephilim, Grendel, V Rod Cruiser, Lanty Leopold, Yanti Leopold, Zalnex, Zero, as well as my immortal 745 MPSI, Ara Danika the Queen, Eva Elite, Erlitis, May, Malik Starfire, Mercuton, Nealem, LM1, Sheesh, and Rid. Thank you all so much. Until next time, I'll see you in space. Yamel just retook Hadley's last night. Excellent. Okay. Okay, 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 okay. Why is this not... Why is this black screen? Why are you black screen? There we go. Alright. <clears throat> now then. What are we doing? What are we doing? We are uh, going to be continuing on my journey as Kato Ash. Uh, for those of you who missed the last stream on, um, I think it was New Year's Eve, but um, I have made a new cha a hero, her new hero, new champion. Jesus fucking, hold on. I have made a new immortal space pilot, Kato Ash. Um, and she is, uh, you know, there's been a lot of, by popular demand, she is back. We're going to continue her journey. So we appear to be, have left off at the, uh, industrialist career, the producer career. So we're going to look into this one. Uh, where was I? Oh, I had a job. I had a job to do. Deliver the job. Boom. That career's done. Now this one. I gotta take something somewhere, right? The Intrepid Adventure of Kato Ash. Yes. Um, would I would I like to see? Would I like to see some artwork from the 4X game? Uh, I haven't decided how I want to cover the 4X game yet. But if you want to show me some stuff, that's cool. We got some traveling to do. It is that perfect temperature in my room where like the jacket was a little bit too warm. 
And nothing is a little bit too cold. Hold on. Uh, you can DM me it on Discord. Yeah, I'm not, I, I legitimately don't know how YouTube treats, uh, does that right now. Do you not have me on YouTube, on, on Discord? Uh, hold on. Is it gonna work? I have no idea if that works. Just making shit up at this point. Hey, go ahead and give it a shot. We'll see. We'll see if you get banned. <laughs> By the way, guys, um, pro tip. I've been having problems with my uh, Eve client where if um, where if like Eve is in the foreground, like Eve is my main client, then uh, other games or other things are super, super, super choppy. Like even YouTube videos like start to lock up and stuff. It's bizarre. Um, but what I figured out what today was is that if I turn on VSync, that stops happening. I don't know if that's going to fix it for everybody, but it helped me. No, I don't think it went through, man. I think it just got eaten. So, yeah, I was pretty happy about that. Um... I hope it helps my problem with like trying to multi box, but uh, yeah. Also, we won our clan v clan this week, so I'm very proud of uh, all of us in raid. Yeah, the FBS thing, like I said, um, I've had it since a little bit before Vanguard, like one of their graphics updates recently. But as soon as I turned on VSync, it stopped doing it. I freezes when I jump the gate. Well, I, by that, that I mean like, so, yeah, yeah, yeah. So, um, like if I have Raid Shadow Legends or something like that running on a different screen, and then I have Eve have the foreground, Raid will be slowed down to like half speed, which sucks because that means that, you know, your grinding is half as effective. Um, but like I said, I've had problems where my YouTube video doesn't buffer correctly because of just how much resources e the Eve client is taking up. And heaven forbid if I try to launch two clients in a row, one of them, like, I'll just get a Windows pop-up that's like, hey, uh, the graphics card said no. And then one of the screens will just be black and I have to close out all of my Eve clients in order to be able to make them work again. And this happens with it's just the two clients running. So I've had all kinds of problems recently. So I hope that this little fix fixes all of it, but we'll see. Also, I went and noticed I was supposed to get a lot of stuff done during Christmas break, but we all we all can probably guess how that went. Um but I will say that this morning I got up and I realized I can't find one of my medications. So I don't think my Adderall actually got refilled. So that's probably why I'm a little bit out of it today.
but I did start the stream an hour early just to give us plenty of time. Also, there is a, uh, There we go. Oh. I mean, these look pretty fine. Uh, some of these look very much like they're straight out of, um, uh, Echoes. What is this? Uh, translate selection into Ingus. Translate full page. Coloring and shaping. Game out, out sourcing supplier. Okay. It does look a little loot boxy, but I mean, this is the crypto thing, right? So, like, these are definitely, like, that is skins. Here's Kaldari crates, Mimitar, Galente, Amar. Uh, yeah. And then these look so much like uh, Eve Echo's UI, or like items. Like these chips are straight out of Echo's. Um, yeah, this is by NetEase Games. So, so this is Echo's stuff. I mean, it might look like terrestrial buildings, but there are there's uh, there's PI in Echoes. This looks very Echoes. All of this looks very Echoes. I will say that. Anywho. Jump back into this. Start conversation. Complete the mission. Yeah, um, I've seen a little bit of the stuff from uh, Awakening. I think it is. No, what is it called? Ascension. Whatever the new the crypto one. But I think it looks different, if I remember correctly. And I can't find anything about it, so I'm not going to say anything more about it, apparently. Yeah, Project Awakening is the crypto thing. Galaxy Quest is the Forex. Wait, what? What? Hold on. There's two mobile games. That's right. Okay. Three mobile games, I suppose, is the way to put it. Uh... This is September 2023. 
developed by CCP Shanghai. So this is not being made in conjunction with um, with the uh, with NetEase. Therefore, those NetEase assets would still be part of um, the other uh, from Echoes. This is it? This is all they, they show? Okay, well, the page that uh, before this showing up. I have apparently completely memory hold Galaxy Quest completely, so I don't know anything about it, good or bad. <laughs> Enhance your mining experience, all caps. A skill plan, Omega, and fitted mining barge awaits you. Instantly unlocks new skills to take your mining to the next level. A fitted retriever ship to make use of your brand new skills complete with a ship skin. Receive 30 days of Omega time to kick your training down overdrive. So for a new player, let's talk about this real quick. Is this actually a decent deal for a new player? There are two reasons why this is a good deal. There's two reasons why, well, three reasons why this is a good deal. None of them are the retriever. Okay. This retriever is worth very little. Um, It may not feel like that right now if you're new enough, but um, if we simulate this ship, we can see that its approximate value is like 60 million, which might seem like a lot, okay? It might seem like a lot, but 60 million is what? 20 plex at most? 20 plex at most, I think, right? What is the price of plex right now? We're going to put a Plex in the cargo hold and see. Oh, sorry. Plex is 4.8 million. So if we pull up the calculator. And we go 60 million divided by 4.8 equals 12. So 12 Plex to buy a retriever okay so let's look at the deal we get a hundred plex so you're already getting five more retrievers worth of flex in this deal so do not be confused by the retriever but what you do get is actually pretty cool what you get is 30 days of omega time so you get a month of Omega time, which is usually $20 for dollars for $17.99. So unless you're going to get a deal on your Omega time in some other way, that is already makes this into a decent deal. If you're already going to be going Omega, this is the way to do Omega. But, uh, or this is a good way to do Omega. But the key here is this instantly unlocks new skills. This is the thing that a lot of people don't know about and makes this good to get very early if you're going to. Basically, what happens is that all of the skills that it takes to mine the mining barge, or mine with a mining barge, which are not alpha skills, by the way. These are Omega-only skills, right? To the mining barge and the strip miners and stuff. This, when you buy this, it instantly, you gain all of those skills. Not to max, not to max, but this isn't an expert system. This is a permanent bonus to those skills. If you already have those skills, you get nothing for it, okay? Nothing. So the, the, the newer your player is, the better of a deal this is. 
The retriever is bullshit. The free skins, the 30 days, sorry, the three, the free skills, the 30 days of Omega time, and the hunter plex is what makes this worthwhile. So, uh, just in case you're new and looking at this, if you are wanting to get into mining as a new player, remember, you don't have to get into mining. Mining is not like a core thing that everybody should do. You know, you should always do what you want to do. Not what you don't do something in order to do something different later. Right. But if you do want to mine and you are enjoying mining, you're not going to be able to mine very well as an alpha. And this, this is it. If you want to mine and you're ready to pay. Like, this is probably one of the better ways of jumping into it. It gets you into those mining barges, and it even gives you one. The The fitting for the mining barge is okay. The other big key to this is that this mining barge can be redeemed anywhere. So if you're in a wormhole, if you're in Nultsec, if you're wherever you happen to be, you can just spawn a retriever out of nowhere, which is kind of nice. Find a buddy you can boost with their orca and just chug coffee and mine like a psychopath for 30 days? Exactly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's, I mean... So that's the other thing is that the retriever is the best AFK miner because it has the largest ore hold of the three. So if you just want to just like throw it out there in a belt and let it burr on rocks all day, this is actually not a terrible plan. Uh. Wait, what? Begin right click the item info panel and s oh, oh, they want me to buy something off the market. Okay, sure. So I'm going to right click on this and go to view market details. And then I'm going to see that there are some on the market. I'm going to sort it by price to make sure I'm getting the best one. Then go down to station. There's the buy order, the seated buy order. You can tell a seated buy order, by the way, guys, over a standard buy order. Because if you look, the standard buy orders have 42 days, 89 days. The seated NPC ones have 364 days. So that's it. That's the way you can tell. Just push up X to haul all of the ore stacks to Jita by the end of the month and sell. Yeah, although I would say that if you're already doing all that, one thing to think about is to make sure you get it compressed first, especially if you have that orca friend that you're talking about. All right, and now I have a uh, civilian armor wrapper. We discovered an ancient site. Relic Analyzer. I already have one of those. Oh, that's actually really cool. It shows the standings gain and stuff. Like, that's my standings, and that's how much I've gained, I assume, from the last mission. That's actually really cool. They need to add that to more agents. Do I have a skin yet? Uh, you have to go get that Adderall. Going without it, you actually need. No, 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 no. It's it, it, it it's fine. It's fine. Um, I will go get it probably tomorrow. I just I had realized too late that. None of the three bottles that I had gotten were the were that one. Uh, Let's go. I'll see you 
Well, no, no, no. Um, you want to com You can compress it in high sec too. Just you get an orca or an athanor that you know. It's just compressed dense feldspar. If you're going to be selling the ore on the market, you should compress it first. Am I not going to be able to? Am I going to be able to activate this acceleration gate? Oh, yeah. Okay. Yeah, in Null, you'll have some sort of buyback program or something to interface with, for sure. The Eve app that let you manage your skill queue while not in game, unfortunately, no longer supported. Oh, oh, oh. I'm just, I'm not even going to go into that topic. As an Android developer that was an active Android developer when that app was made, I am... All I'll say is I tried to warn him. Evermore uh, takes ships made by players. C-Speed uh, dispenses the ships through RM deals. We can possibly affirm the closed environment economy is maintained. Yeah, I mean... Yeah, that was always the point of the Evermarks thing. Um, although, I also think that way more ever get turned in than, than CCP distributes, so... Mm. Correct. Uh, yeah, my point, though, is, is that, like, selling ore on the market, selling uncompressed ore on the market is usually a pretty significant mistake. Things aren't priced out right. Because people aren't used to dealing in uncompressed ore. Probably should have brought more than one gun. my optimal five let's go ahead and start forcing them to stop orbiting me there we go there we go Force this dude's uh, to a line up. See how he's like basically lined up. Our arrows have lined up with each other now, it's because that now he's trying to chase me, and so his traversals drop down a lot. Now I just turn around. Cut him off, and then work my way back to the box. Now that he's slung shot past me a little bit. I'm trying to cut down his traversal, so that way my rails can hit him better. There we go. And there we go. Resourcing to help reduce the overabundance of assets because people mine AFK and manufacture so much. Wait, what? Uh, oh, yeah, the Evermarks. Well, so here's the thing. Evermore, Evermarks, I think, were part of a bigger thing. That got more or less uh, canceled. I think CCP had much more optimistic ideas about what we were going to take to crypto. And so like the entire other half of the whole Evermarks project, like basically got cut. But they still needed Evermarks to be the in-game currency so that way they can distribute cosmetic items. <clears throat> Oh, 
Oh, that's the standings that I get if I gain the thing, maybe. I don't know. Maybe? Balancing the books. Transport these goods. Do you think Project Awakening was supposed to be an addition to Tranquility? I don't know. I think that those are probably separate projects. Hey, what's up, Daima? Greetings from Legion of Death amid Watchmaker. Oh, Witchmaker? Yeah. So, like, let's be real. What I think that Project Awakening is, is that there is a bunch of VC money running around looking to invest in a crypto game. And uh, Hilmar managed to convince them that he was his guy, their guy. Like, that's it. That's a totally separate project with totally separate money. TCP was handed $50 million dollars to make something out of crypto. What I'm saying is, is that I believe that there was originally plans to incorporate, uh, you know, uh, pay to earn or like play to play to earn model into Eve through Evermarks by tying it to crypto potentially. But, you know, the whole not for tranquility thing. Like, I think that there was plans to potentially incorporate it, uh, but it got completely de decimated. But that doesn't mean that they didn't have those other projects that have separate funding and separate development. What's my motivation for starting a new? Because uh, uh, the idea is, is that like I want to make a uh, you know should you play Eve in twenty twenty four video, and um, this just it gives me an opportunity to kind of try out all the new new guy stuff, experiment, and this way when I'm when I do things. Nobody can say like, oh, you're cheating or, or, oh, you're just using your more powerful character, right? Like this is, we're just going to, we're going to, we're going to see what we can learn about EVE Online from the perspective of a totally new pilot. So I'm claiming all my rewards. This is probably fine. We'll just redeem this to the current station. I probably didn't actually want to do that, did I? Oh, well. We'll just throw this back in there. I want to sell my ex-high partners on Binance. Oh, boy. By the way, I found out to yesterday, like, you know, you know, Sam Bankman Freed, right? Right. Like, so Sam Bankman Freed was the head of the, like the F FTX or whatever shenanigans. He recently went to jail for how much like fraud his crypto stuff was, which it, I mean, it takes a lot of fraud for it to be enough fraud to go to jail when it comes to crypto. But anywho, he had a whole like financial situation like he had his own effectively currency that he was like pumping up in order to sell in order to finance the other crypto stuff but the insane like the thing that got me about it is that his name is literally sam bank man fried i don't know why everybody says sam bankman freed because like that's not how it's spelled it's spelled Sam Bank Man Fried. I mean, what is it called? Uh, uh, nominative determinacy? I, it's crazy.
So use PA to learn about the pay to earn systems and then incorporate these lessons into Eve. I doubt it. I mean, here's the thing about CCP. They know that Eve Online is fragile. So, like, I don't think that that's worth it to them. I think that they would just much rather have uh, Project Ascension be Eve 2.0 and not try to retroactively make Eve into Project Ascension. I understand that, Jeff. I get that. But still, that's still pretty wild, isn't it? Like, why have I never heard this joke before? I feel like it's just laying there. In fact, it was so profound that when I saw, like, I first saw, like, uh, yesterday, it was like a news broadcast about him. Uh, and, and it showed his name in, like, the, the, the what is it, the... Not the klaxon, that's an alarm. But the the bottom part, right? Uh, and I thought it was like a pun. I thought they were making a joke. Is it the clarion? Okay. Uh, wait, you want me to buy something again? Oh, I need to complete... Two 1x afterburners. Wait. Oh, I, I actually can't fulfill those? I would have figured that they would have given me the blueprint for it, right? Weird. All right. Well, fair enough. Well, that's overpriced, isn't it? Yeah, that's like four times the price. That's neat. In this tutorial, you will be pr price gouged by other players for 300% above the regional average. Cool. I'll do two of those. Whatever. Uh... Yeah, yeah, yeah. Nominative determinism. You never heard of nominative determinism? Oh, man. Yeah, no, it's pretty good. I get abs for free. Do you know how much people have to work out to get a good set of abs? All right. It's capitalism, baby! All right. Uh, can I make more than two? How many do I need? I need one. You just need to not eat to get abs? I mean... Yeah, that's a, that's a fairly... I mean, I'm a pretty skinny dude. I and I so I've got I'm I'm one of those skinny dudes that kind of has abs by default. It's true. Captain, your manufacturing job, blah blah blah. Oh wait, but, wait. I, okay. Let's see. Manufacturing. Manufacturer frigate, manufacturer destroyer, manufacturer cruiser. Market. Earn fifty thousand isk on the market. Okay. We should we should work on these career paths. In the meantime, though, let's go with Soldier of Fortune. Do I have any other weapon systems that I can bring? Hobgoblins? Hell yeah. Let's grab that. 
and we got two civilian Gatling guns. Watch out, we're coming for you. One of the industrial rewards is a racial specific cruiser. Oh, that's cool. All we have to do is figure out where we want to get the isogen from. So yeah, it's worth noting, yeah, if you get into a point in the career agents, it might it's probably worthwhile to go do a, another career agent. Because they do synergize with each other pretty well. If civilian guns don't use ammo, what are you firing? Laura incorrect answers only. Kittens. Kittens are so valueless in New Eden that we don't even track them. They're just there. We don't there's just plenty of them. I think he means 10% ME, 20% TE, maybe. Wait, no, I got it. The civilian ra uh, the civilian rail guns fires civilians, duh. Uh Jeff, it's that's not a thing. It's ME is 10%, TE is 20%. There's there's no 20% ME. Yeah, like any good Kaldari guy, I I know my drone supremacy apparently. Also, in before the combat site is harder than the uh or sorry in, the combat site is easier to kill the rats than the uh balancing the books site game of cats where are you how do you know that i'm looking for you why are you running from me? They, that cat knows, man. She's like, I'm out. I was waiting for Ash's cat to make a comment about the fire kittens thing. There you go. Go for the eyes, boo. current ship does not meet the requirements oh the ship that your pirate that they give you so this is an important one okay in the uh in the soldier of fortune which is the advanced c combat career path there's going to be two missions that force you to suicide yourself this is one of them so not only do you want to fly this particular ship that they give you right what you want to do is right click on it and go uh insure what insurance basically says is i bet in the next 12 weeks this ship is going to die that's it that's all it is it's a gamble i bet in the next 12 weeks this ship is going to die i bet you 200,000 isk and you will pay me 46 sorry it costs me 46,000 isk and you will pay me three times as much if i succeed now i know that this ship is going to die in about two minutes. So this is a fairly safe bet for me, but that's what we're going with. Hi, Kitty. No? She is looking at me uh, detestably. I don't know if that's... The right word for it, but whatever. My head cannon for the civilian is that they use energy material to 3D molecular printers. It's why Corvettes are also free. Um, 
I don't generally don't do any mining, but when I did my own new player alpha experience experiment, the danger and value of mining low sec ore made it very interesting and rewarding. That's true. I, I do like, um, you know, the thing is, is that like a lot of people think, oh, new players shouldn't go to low sec. It's too dangerous. But like, you're a new player. You should do nothing but dangerous shit. Why am I warping to gates at a range? Am I doing that on purpose for some reason? No? Yeah, it's 10% material, 20% time. That's true. Cheat the second time you have to blow up and warp off in time. Uh, if you get enough range, then come back. Use a free Corvette to, uh, to get the mission trigger going boom. You can also just kind of deck out your Corvette enough to probably just be able to beat it. When I tried mining in low sec, I got ransomed. Well, I mean, you know, not every result is you winning. Oh, yeah, I just need to go to the hideout. Boom, dead. No way, no, it can't be the second time you have to blow up. Way too much on grid. We're going to try it. We're going to try it. I don't, D Jeff, that's pretty insane. You need to have 125 DPS to kill on. That was gross. Hi. That was not animal abuse, I promise you. She had a... She had to get uh, taken care of. All right, anyway, so. You can get two to 300 damage, DPS with a Valor. Valor, that would do it. Wrong one. Two minutes left. So this one wants me to scram people. Have I done Enforcer yet? I have Have I not done Enforcer yet? Oh, yeah. Let's do Enforcer first. <laughs> You're supposed to do Enforcer before Sol Soldier of Fortune. It is a pretty good party trick, though. It's true. <laughs> I was watching this thing. There's a whole debate online about whether or not Mistra is a groomer and the abusive relationship, the mutually abusive relationship. Oh, cat, don't be on my 
whatever. Uh, the mutually abusive relationship between Gale and um, Mithra in, or Mistra, sorry, in um, Baldur's Gate 3. Uh, oh, yeah, uh, Galathri explanation of sounds. Yeah, um, the issue with that, honestly, is just creating all the sounds and knowing what they all do myself, right? I've had to figure out some of them by myself. You could probably recreate most of them. I joined the chat channel named Dagon's Droppers. Dagon droppers just to kill them every chance you get just hang out there it's like no I'm not trying to recruit you I just want to I just want to kill your Dagon wait a minute we're supposed to scram this guy aren't we yeah we were supposed to scram this dude Well, yeah, I mean, everybody knows armor alarm and hull alarm and all that stuff, but do you know what the sound of incoming armor damage is? Or, the, uh, you know, a, a timer fin run wrapping up? Or uh, low cap? Or high cargo? Or there's, there's all sorts of weird ones. Poke down sound? Oh, that... Yeah, but well, like, so the one that got me was this. There's this wump wump sound that happens, and it gets faster sometimes in the background. That's actually the sound of you taking armor damage. Like that's that seems to only happen when you're taking armor damage. This is one of the missions I think would be a good redo. Make the pl player do a full tackle, then follow, then follow up on a mission to descan and tackle. I've always said so. Like, what I would really like to see is this replaced by the idea of like a series of events where it's like they need your help because of the pirates, and so you end up building a thing that allows you to jump into a place, which is basically an instance, and then do things there, and that's why you have to build all this basic stuff is because you need to like. You have a little fob there, and so you can build something in the fob and then use that to go deal with the stuff, and you're scanning things down. Like, I've always thought that that would be a good way to do it, but they really don't like their instancing. Uh Oh, wait. I just need to scram this guy, right? All right, all right. Don't shoot. All right, cool. I've always said that what... So what you should do is you should open up this. It should be called uh, Aura, not the agency. And then you go over here to, like, the help section, and it's got all the different sections of the game, like, all the... like, Or you go to Encounters, right? You pick Faction Warfare, and you click here, and it's like, oh, well, there's a Faction Warfare tutorial. So you click on that, and then it says, okay, dock up to begin your tutorial. Or like if you go to exploration, like you can go here and be like uh, cosmic signatures or whatever. And they're like, okay, we'll dock up. And then there's a scanning tutorial and then a hacking tutorial. That's like, okay, scan down this thing in order to jump through it. And then that, now you get credit. Okay, here's these four cans, hack them in five minutes. Okay, good job. You did the tutorial, but you can do it from anywhere. Repair his ship.
Right. I like the same thing as the ship simulator, too, so you can understand how the ship flies before you buy the expensive parts. I agree. In fact, I would go so far as to say I want an entire simulator so that way you can, like, load in with your buddies. This would allow us to do tournaments. This would allow people to do testing. This would make it so that sissy doesn't being down doesn't matter as much anymore. And it would allow you to, like, fly with a buddy in a slower paced environment so that way you can, like, work with them. Or you could even do, like, corpse skirmishes and stuff. Um... I also really think that it would be cool, like, I want to see them put the tutorial into, like, some classic environments. Like, what if your final test for a combat pilot is set in BTAC-R, one of the most legendary battles in all time, right? They take the telemetry data from that fight, and they recreate it in real time. So you're no longer playing, you know, it's not in one-tenth tie-dye or whatever, but, like, that's the environment you get to ex you, you get to play out this these moments in history as part of your training that also starts to embed you into the player history you see individual player names and you're told that this is a thing that actually happened i just i think that that would be so much cooler than what we got right now Yes, Felipe, that is where I got my inspiration from. That is correct. So next week, uh, so this Friday, we're going to start having a convocation meeting every the first Sunday of every month. So this Sunday is going to be a convocation meeting. And my plan is, is that next week on Wednesday, because I normally don't stream on Wednesdays, that'll be my first members only stream. So we'll either do like Phasmo or something like that. But I'm going to, I'm going to try to do like a members and supporters stream at least once a month e valkyrie was really good i i am so pissed at how how poorly it was managed Make a stand at the pirate base. Destroy at least one ship. All right, here we go. All right, we're going to try this out, okay? We're going to jump in the venture. Or, sorry, the Merlin, rather. Now we got to load it up, okay? So we're going to load it up with... A civilian Gatling gun. And a medium shield extender? Is that going to be enough? Probably not, right? Let's just strip the fittings. Let's just repackage the Heron. Which will strip the fittings, and then I can just put uh, a second Gatling laser on there. And an afterburner. And a nano. Okay, so. Our goal is to kill one thing, and then get off, and then come back in a Corvette, and kill it the rest of the way. Or get killed. But just in case, we're going to also ensure this one. Tying it all together is the dream. Yeah. You have space, boots on the ground. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, that was always the vision, right? I love all the new lighting effects on frigates, man. I guess it's not that new anymore, but still.
Okay. Let's first get close to the mercenary. Now we're going to turn around, align to the station, and shoot the mercenary. Really? Dang it. I have to get too close. There we go. There we go. Kill it. No. Ah. Too much. And get onto the other side and then a line out right now does the lining out right now work the lining out right now work why do you have so much hull <laughs> come on go 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 Yes! Auto cannons on a Caldari free. Those aren't. Uh, those are Gatling. Yeah, it was a it was a tricky one. There's some hot manual piloting action there. Can I can I wait, can I uh insure my Corvette? I don't think so, right? You can't insure a Corvette. Doesn't seem to make any sense at all. Uh yeah, it doesn't you can't. Still need to blow up for the mission. Yeah, 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 we're working on it. Hey, Sidewinder. Oh, 70 you. How's it going, man? You having a good new year? Is it not going to let me do it without the Merlin? Hold on. Is it not going to let me do it without the Merlin? Have Are they on to me? Uh, no, it, it, like, literally the insurance option wasn't even there.
You can kill the first ship with two civilian guns in your Corvette. It's true. But we were just trying to see whether or not you could warp out after it was dead. Which is also apparently true. Wait. Oh. Oh! This is a different site. Hold on. <laughs> Wait a minute. There it is. I found it. I got it. They tried to hide it from me, but I figured it out. It's in the right-click menu. The one place they knew I'd never look. Has anybody gotten into Lethal Company yet? I need to find more people to play Lethal Company. Well, I have the Corvette now. So we'll see if it counts. Smite me, almighty oh smiters! I mean, I could just warp off again right now since they only have me webbed. Come on! You elites. They ain't even shot firing at me yet. I'm going at seven meters per second. So whatever's going on, it's your guys' fault. It does look good now. Guys, you are not teaching people to be scared of things, man. Eight damage from the spider drone. Hell yeah, with two spider drones missing me completely. Come on. Come on, guys. You can do this. Oh, yeah. Uh, 27 damage. Big ups. You should have brought the reverse target painter. You mean the micro warp drive? All of the Corvettes have good bonuses. If you pay if you look at them. At this rate, bringing a Vexor would have crushed the spawn. Yeah, I mean... There we go. Now we're taking some damage. Now we're actually taking damage. It's still mostly spider drones. The terrorists are still missing me correct completely. I don't know if I've been hit by a terrorist yet. Oh, there we go. 20, 20 damage grays. 28 damage grays. Oh! Oh shit! Oh shit! They made it! I'm still not scrammed. I could warp out right now. Alright. Get out of there. Cool. That counted. Break the mission if you kill the rats? That's a good question.
620 damage taken. I'm calling Michael Rob Drives for various painters forever now. <laughs> yeah, man, just get some officer mods, maybe abyssal roll a few of them. Get yourself an abyssal web. Can we stand to not know if it'll break it? Uh well I it's too late now. I'm gonna have to come back in with like Ash and do some of the career agents and, and break it that way. And I got to keep my Merlin. And that's done. So, what's next? Enforcer level one. Okay. Let's fit up this. <coughs> Let's go back out in this Merlin again. Do we have anything else that we want to put on it? Damage control's good. What? Uh, that's unfortunate. The power of a medium shield extender, I guess. Uh, I wonder if my alpha, uh, if alphas that skip the tutorial and dock and train can do this stuff then? Yes. These are just career agents. So there's three sets of career agents per race for a total of 12 career agent sets total. Uh, there's always three sets of five agents per race. So 12 sets of five agents total. I'm 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 uh I'm checking on my raid shadow legends right now. Hold on. This is important business. Okay, I'm gonna upgrade this one. For the record, they stopped paying me, so Anywho. Can I keep killing? What was that? Oh, Gris's pirates decreased. Are you sure CCP gives you uh, SP for running through them the first time, too? Uh, not SP, well, not each one of them. You get SP for the first time you run through them, period. But, like, you get big faction standings boosts. It's one of the better, more consistent ways of getting faction standings boosts for Empire. Each race has three factions. Each faction has their own set of career agents. That is actually correct. Like when you go and pick your uh, your race, you actually pick like, are you a Dedis or uh, you know whatever Caldari or are you an Intaki Galente or you know whatever? Like those are why there's three sets. Or maybe maybe it's the schools. Maybe it's the academy that that is why. But either way, there's. Because there's two sets of three uh, three options available to you: the school and the sub race.
Remember, if you want to if you want to warp quickly, even in a frigate or whatever, one of the best ways to warp quickly is to cut your prop as soon as it's time to warp. Now, actually, in that sort of situation, it can actually be slow if you're coming in from a different angle, and then you kill your prop and then try to warp. It actually can take way longer to to align. But in general, when you're just going around and when it's time to warp, you want to cut your prop. Yeah, there's seven tribes of Matar, but you can only play as three. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what Jeff is saying. Correct. I think there's four races in, in the Kaldari total. And like, can you be Manar? Because you can be in Taki, Yinmei, and Galente, but you can't be Manar. Or Jindo. Or in May? No, I guess yeah. You know, you can be in. What does that mean? Cut your prop. Turn off your uh, your uh, afterburner or micro warp drive. Basically, the macro warp drive and afterburner makes you faster, but it also increases your inertia, which makes it slower to get into warp. Uh, kill the pirates. Rescue the civilian miner. Mar even have two sub factions that hold Empire Space. Oof. That's a technicality. But yes, no, you're absolutely correct. Conid and um, Amatar are technically part of the Empire. So if you look at this afterburner, <clears throat> you can see that it, while it is making me faster, it also increases 500,000 kilograms to my mass, which my mass is 900,000 kilograms. So it's literally a 50% increase in my mass. That's going to change how fast I get up to speed. That's going to be uh, change how fast I change my vector. And both of those things change how fast I enter warp. You hit warp at something like 70% of the base speed micro warp drive AB makes you max speed higher cutting it. Well, that's also true. Is that like, so you need to be going 70% of your maximum speed in the correct vector in order to warp. So like with the micro warp drive trick, the way that works is that it boosts your speed so far up that when the cycle ends and the micro warp drive stops, your max speed drops down, but your current speed stays the same. And so, you know, if you're, if you go from like, let's say 150 meters per second to a kilometer per second, 10 seconds later, you're going 200, 200 meters per second. That, that micro warp drive stops. Now you're going over a hundred percent of your maximum speed. So as, assuming that you're at least pointed in the correct direction, you'll warp instantly. But that's why I was saying like the vector is what's important. So if your vector's off, in other words, you're pointing and you're actively moving in the wrong direction, especially if it's like perpendicular, that's when it can be the, the longest time. Like if, if I'm in a, like a battleship, for example, and I'm coming in towards a gate from the side and I cut my afterburner and hit warp right then, it'll actually take longer to fully s realign and then go in that direction than otherwise, which is unfortunate. But generally speaking, it is better to cut your prop and get out of there. That's right. If you web a ship, it, it also cuts their um, maximum speed without cutting their current speed. So, you know, like that's how freighters work. You know, freighters may be able to move 100 meters per second or whatever. But then when you web it, they go down to like two meters per second. So then it doesn't matter how fast it's currently going. It's going to be going like at least 70% of its active speed. So as soon as you web that freighter, it, it the next tick, it's in warp. So you can make a, a 40 second align time become a two second align time if you if you do it right and you have a good enough webber. And the fun fact, the fun side of that is that, yes, it does make 
the the large ship doesn't actually align correctly because like here's the thing your ship isn't actually pointed in any direction what the direction that you see your ship pointed at is actually just kind of like uh, a, a calculation that's done by your ship based on where your vector was and where your vector is now right uh, that's why if you have zero vector in other words you're stopped you actually aren't pointing in any direction at all even though it looks like you are you're not you can spin around just as fast as you can get going in the direction you are pointed at. So, um, but, so if it's like, so if it's going this way and then it starts warping that way, well, it's at zero. So it's at zero vector. So it can point in any direction evenly. So you start going in that direction, but it knows it's a freighter. So it's really slow. So it begins the process of turning very slowly. At this point, it now gets hit by webs. It enters into warp. Its vector is that way. It is going correct in its vector, but the visual of the turn isn't finished yet. So it'll just go into warp turned. That's how things drift into warp sideways. I think today we will aim to finish off the career agents and then tomorrow we'll try some yeet exploration. Depends. How's the insurgencies doing? Uh, most of the, well, two thirds of the way through it. So tomorrow's probably not going to be a great day for me to join the insurgency, unfortunately. Oh, seven Titan. And I'm out. Make sure to like the stream if you haven't already. Also, like I said, I returned to this challenge due to popular demand. So please, on the Discord or elsewhere, let me know uh, if there's anything in particular you would like to see Kato work on. Which side of the insurgency are you going to join? You know what? I instinctively was thinking angels, but now that you've mentioned that, I don't know, maybe. Whatever. This one is more about you guys, so maybe somebody will convince me to do one or the other. Mining? Uh, We could do gas huffing. We could try to earn enough to get a gas mining book. Cow mill. <laughs> I mean, it would be the authentic new bro. I don't know how to play this game experience, right? To join cow mill. Oh!
My sensors found nothing in the area other than a stargate partially hidden inside the cluster of rock formations. I would advise you to proceed with uh, care. Smuggler gates such as these are rarely left undefended. This is one of those things that I've asked for for a while. You know, I, I like the insurgency stuff. I like the idea that we can work with the pirates. But I think that standings should be reworked to better represent, like, the relationship of these different pirates and, like, our relationship to these pirates. So not only could different pirates have different things that give them or loses them standings, but they can also have different rewards for having high enough standing. So one of my ideas was is that, like, the Garistas or the Serpentis, when you get high enough standings with them, suddenly their daily smuggler, you know, their smuggler network becomes accessible to you so there are smuggler stargates that spawn throughout the uh, throughout new eden every day almost like permanent wormhole connections for that day uh and only people with enough standings with that pirate faction would be able to access them i could do some home fronts that's true let's see. we could see how easy it is to get into home fronts as a brand new person with no nobody that i vouch for them Uh, I'd like the same thing for the militias. Yeah, I mean, like, yeah, exactly. You could definitely theoretically get into the same thing. Technically, I'd say that the um, shipcaster is trying to get in there a little bit. But yeah, I, th I like the idea of, like, gates that you can only use because of the connections that you have. And that's really strong because, like, how many NPC how many player empires... How many null blocks are going around and making sure that they have positive standing, positive six or positive eight with the Garistus? What I think we should try to do with Kato, what I'd like to see us try to do with Kato is complete all of the agent agency career paths, right? Complete all of the graduate, all four of the graduations and get this uh, 125,000 skill points. There's a there's a blue shard summoning event coming up in the next day or two, so I should definitely not open up. What? All right, I'm supposed to follow this guy's instructions. It's good to see you, Privateer. I have a message for you. Oh shoot, she's totally Garistus. From Tahamar. Which he asked to be delivered to you. You have gone through a pretty hazardous ordeal, having to fight against our new recruits and brave one of our traps. We certainly gave you credit for getting through it all in one piece. You have guts, and that is exactly the type of pilot that we're looking for. Yes, we've you've guessed it. We're here in the heart of the Kaldari State, but we've always keep an eye out for positive addition, possible additions to our fleet. You state pilots are so much better trained than most of the scum we have back at home. So I give you this proposition. Visit our agents 
to join our cause and earn wealth beyond their wildest dreams. The stuck-up corporate corporates here in Kaldari space have nothing to offer you that we can't double or even triple. They hoard their isk like rats, and the poor sods they hire to do their dirty work only get scraps dropped through the dozens of layers of bureaucracy. You're worth more than that. Yeah, you're worth more than that. Come get RLP, where our ammo is worth less. Join us to be rid of the greed and backstabbing of capitalism. To find purpose of your life and goal to achieve alongside the rest of your mighty host. I don't know if I beat capitalism by joining the graces. You have many days to consider our proposal, but first you must complete another test. When you are ready, attack our fleet. And if you leave this place with your life, then we will know that you are ready for what is ahead. And I can't hit continue. So let's just shoot at this dude. Let's keep it range 4K. <laughs> Down with capitalism. Now let me finish my coffee cup in my wonderful Convocation of Empyreans coffee mug. Ding! Mmm. It just makes the coffee taste better. Their ammo may be worth less, but their BPCs or implants are worth may way more. Uh, yeah, but man, things have been weird in the insurgencies. It's getting better, though. Hi, church. The church, not just a church, but the church. <clears throat> Nicely done. Perhaps we will meet some other day. For now, I'll be making my way back to base in my capsule. Still can't hit continue. I'll offer you a lot more money to fight against the capitalists. In fact, we'll even give you the means of production. Uh, is there, is the only way to get the better pirate ammo from drops? Correct. I'm, I'm pretty sure that's correct. Destroy Tahamar's outpost. Here we go, baby. We'll give you the means of production by which we mean we'll pay somebody else to operate for you. <laughs> Manufacturing in Zarzak. Here's all the money I've gotten. Woo! All of that was 275,000 isk. Oh my god, they give new players too much free shit. <laughs> am I... Am, am I... Okay, you guys are watching me. Am I warping at 10 to these acceleration gates? Is that what I'm doing? Just, like, instinctively? I feel like I'm warping at 0, but I keep landing as if I'm warping at 10. I'll have to pay attention better. I have a habit of warping at 10, thanks to uh, years in the militia. Actually, well, most a lot of acceleration gates you want to you want to you want to warp to them at 10. Come on, guys.
No, I try. I check. I I checked that earlier, Titan. I just have a tendency to like warp automatically with like my like that the radial. I think I'm warping at zero. Cool she erupts. can't overheat my gun, A, because it's civilian, and B, because I don't have thermodynamics. Should probably look into that. My daily kill quest? Destroy 20. Oh! Hey! Flame. Why do I keep going after these dudes instead of the fucking Lodgy? Let's kill the Lodgy real quick. Another one million isk too? Did I miss that? Oh, you have to claim these individually? Whoops. I'm doing I'm really bad at my at doing the new dailies. I like them. I'm just really bad at doing them. Is a rewards tab? Oh yeah, there it is. Look at that. With less clicks, I know. But, you know, at this point I'm starting to suspect that they think that the click is a good thing. Like, forcing you to interact with it. Either, either they have it in their heads that that's like engagement and that's what game juice looks like, or maybe they just want you to actually have to engage with it so that way you sometimes miss it? I don't know. I don't like things that don't auto-claim. At least have the option of it. Or at least things that don't that like you lose out on if you don't auto-claim it. Like event track stuff. Oh my, those sentries are... Those sentries are rough. Let's just go ahead and kill the outpost. Wait, 
Your instructions were to destroy it. I would recommend leaving the loot in the wreck. Oh, after you obliterate. Got it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't grab contraband. What I hate is the event stuff. Log in every day, but you forget to claim one day. You can't get it all. Well, so remember, it isn't about that because it's only the first few, you know, like only the first chunk of time that it matters. Everything past that is just bonus, right? So like there was 30 days worth of rewards for a 30 day turn in, but you only had to get 20 of those 30 days in order to get the big prize. The last 10 days were just like extra bullshit. So that way, if you do get the 20 days in 20 days, you still have something to get after that. So you don't actually miss out as anything. It's just historically, there wouldn't have been anything for that extra day. It's like the reward track ends, but then keeps going just in case you still have more time. This takes a long time. You can see I'm not really missing or anything. Yeah, they've been doing that now since they came back with the uh, Chris with the Halloween event. I I like this. Um, I I wish that they communicated it better, like visually, to let you see like this is the big reward and then these are the extra ones. But yeah, like. The whole point is that there is enough days that if you log in every single day, you will get something every single day. It used to be that there would only be like, okay, well, it's it's a 20 day reward, but you have to log in for 12 days of it. But then after that 12 days, there's nothing. You don't get anything. But if you're playing a game that has a free-to-play component and you're not, like, defending yourself against FOMO, then you're just setting yourself up for failure. Uh, what do you think that we got co incoming for lore stuff? Yeah, I mean, like, they've got it to... Can, uh, there's more stuff coming to Zarzak. Uh, they've set up stuff when it comes to Pochfin if they want to. The really big thing to keep an eye on is, like, especially with the shooter stuff happening, keeping an eye on, like, the Intaki... Yagali situation, as well as the Nullsec groups, like uh, Kaldari taking space in Nullsec. Like, these things are the powder kegs that we're, we're waiting for when it comes to these, um, this, the lore. And, and furthermore, the lore is probably going to be focused pretty clearly on, like, the cat's out of the bags, guys. The Deathless has revealed himself, and the Vanguard army has been deployed for the first time. Right? Like, it is game fucking on when it comes to the empires. They're already rack, you know, rocketing towards war. And now these, like, third parties come in and show that immortal clone soldiers are now, A, completely out of control of the empires, and B, way more organized than they were before. So I think that the future of the lore is going to be focused a lot on that. Will we get another Shadow War style event? Uh, soon enough, yeah. What are those called now? Faction campaigns, I think is what they called them. CCB needs to fix Zarzak so there's more than 10 people in it at any given time first, though. And by fix, I mean removes bubbles. Man, I... Oh. I docked up in Zarzak the other day, and I don't know what made me sadder. The fact that there is, like, an eight-man multi-boxer, or the fact that he represented, like, a grand total of the uh, uh, of the 14 people that were in that, it, it docked up at the time. Yeah, it's, it's getting to be time for things to start happening. CCB's back. Um, 
January is usually a little bit of a quieter month overall. Well, look at what the cat dragged in. Come to avenge these pathetic civilians we butchered. I'd like to see you try. Okay, well, here we go. There's a scandal that destroyed our base. Get them alive if possible. Continue doesn't work. Yeah, so... uh, <clears throat> I don't know about next week. Maybe a week after. Hard to say. Because, right, like, there's going to be Vanguard tests at the, you know, uh, around the 20th or so of the next several months. So, and, and, and the second half of the month is usually when these kinds of patch, like big patches or whatever happens too. So I wouldn't, I, we might see some stuff start to trickle in next week, but uh, certainly by the week after the next pieces are going to have to start moving. Syndicate re region is ripe for uh, to be invented up. Remember it's mostly in talkie people. Who hate the Federation? But the Federation is now aggressively pro Intaki. So hmm. remember, the Intaki people and the Intaki Syndicate are two different groups, more or less. And also, the Intaki Syndicate now have open business deals, including territorial claim agreements with the Kaldari State. The Kaldari State are currently protecting the Intaki Syndicate from the Galente Federation. So that's thing. Yeah, the next Vanguard playtest is at the end of January. And the vast, vast, vast majority of things happening are probably going to be related to that because that's the thing that CCP wants people's eyes on. Uh, kind of, It's kind of weird that the Empire seemed to have completely ignored the events around Zarzak. The pirates even destroyed two stations near the gates uh, and nothing from the Empire's. Well, first of all, it's in low security space, those two structures. Second of all, those were player structures. And the Empires aren't really willing to stick their neck out on that kind of thing. Um, you would expect to have seen a more bigger response from the Empires. But at the same time, it's entirely possible that the Empires, at least some of them, are looking to see how they can capitalize on this whole situation. I mean, there is lots and lots of evidence that the Federation has worked with the Deathless on numerous occasions in the past. So it's very, you know, we still don't know who all the Deathless was dealing with back in, in the last year, right? When he was doing all of his advanced tech and selling things to people. Um, but he does have close ties to the Federation. Yeah, and the, the Empires have actually responded, in fact. The Empires responded by beefing up security in their capital systems in Galente space and, heck, in uh, Mimitar space. So there's definitely things happening, for sure. That was reaction to the insurgencies, not specifically the new gate network. Uh, well, I mean, yeah, but I mean, like six of one, half a dozen, right? As far as the new gates go, I mean, what are they going to do about it? What do they? What do you want them to do about it? Cordon it off? You want them to expend resources? If the peacock was found in Zarzak. Uh, yeah. Well, he's still in Aram, isn't he? We should do a search on Leopold. Where's Marcus when you need him?
That would be an awkward meeting, right? Esri Hokuzotsu meeting back up with the peacock. She like shows up and he's like, hi. Remember me? <laughs> Line out and away we go. I have 17 million isk already. Wait a minute, really? Did somebody send me isk? Yes, somebody sent me ISK. Okay. But still, that's only 8 million. So that means I've made 9 million. I guess, yeah, because look at these air daily goals. That's like a million ISK, uh, half a million ISK pop, pop. Huh. All right. Man, EVE Online is an easy ass game. I don't know what your guys' problem is. I'm making fucking money hand over fist. I'm not even out of the tutorial yet, and I can already pay for a cruiser. Oh, bullshit. Ha! I just put these in instead. Now it all fits, but I need ammo. Where's my... Do I have ammo? Where's my ammo? Do I not... There's the ammo. Uh, and let's go ahead and put these implants in, too. And we will... Take this off, put this on, and we'll put that on, and that'll do for now. Okay. The creations pay about 10 million themselves. Whew. Well, there has been stuff about the empires. So we have Do we have anything here? Black Eagles have deployed to kill teams to Heveris. Imperial Inquisitor assassinated. That's not great. Uh, network intrusion at DD Molten Heath headquarters. Caldari resistance cells in Potvin indicate, indicate Caldari su supplies increased due to new delivery me methods. Read Shipcaster. Um, yeah. Caldari Navy raises alert level in Corella Constellation as repeated raiding by Garissa's lead to the new militia frontline systems. Yeah, a lot of the a lot of the response has actually been to deal with the actual raids themselves, right? Uh 
Uh, I suggest approaching Hotel Kim to have a better look. The hole appears to be damaged. A cloud of radioactive da gas is flowing through the cracks and filling up the void surrounding the structure. The corpses floating around the inn are most likely people who are ejected through the airlock. Dang, this place looks uh pretty messed up. It's a trap. A trap. Oh, oh, Havers was when where did the first strike? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Most of that stuff was um, most of that stuff was Vanguard reaction for sure. Favorite Christmas gifts. A zero turn motor. No more push mower. Upgrade from Corvette to cruiser of mowing effectively. Wait, what? How does that work? I gotta hold on. Zero turn mower. Oh! Like, oh god, that's like a seating. That is like a vehicle. That's the vehicle version, right? That's some that's some serious upgrading. Like that. That's a pretty good Christmas gift. Although it is it is a nice like subtle like go do some chores, right? Congratulations, your Christmas present is the ability to do chores easier. Yay. That price. Well, I don't know whether or not that's uh, that uh, he didn't send me a link. I just googled uh that you know, the zero turn mower, so I have no idea that part, but they don't look, they don't look like they're one of those things that you get on a budget. That's for sure. All the commercial mowing companies use that style of mower. They're pretty nice. Yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, it's a that's a commercial. That's the point. If you're, that's an industrial level, the full scale for realsy mower. Can I activate the gate? What? I could just activate the gate? All right. Well, remember, I have a lar ma uh, medium shield extender on this ship, so... Destroy the narcotics wa warehouse. Well, if you're mowing in a cruiser, you're not mowing in low sec, if you know what I mean. <laughs> Look at all that bloom. And that's that post-processing medium. Holy shit. Hold on. What happens if I do post-processing? Oh, hey, that actually, that actually made it way nicer. 
normally post-processing high used to make it so that the post-processing was even more effect like bigger effect but that actually really really helped I love how the power starts to flicker when something takes hull damage. It's always been one of my favorite things. Along with being able to see the armor damage itself. I remember when that wasn't the case. You know, having that kid, having kids to do the mowing for you doesn't actually work out long term as a as a good strategy as you would think. Why did I not take the drugs? Because I am an outstanding, an upstanding individual. I don't know. Nine out of ten. Four jumps away. Uh. Let's see. Merlin doesn't have that space. Let's fit the web on there. All right. Yeah, that'll do. Oh, shit, shit, shit. Except. An outstanding citizen that I don't plan to do anything. I plan to use this character to show you guys stuff. <laughs> so if they go eat, if, if Kato becomes a insurgent, that's your guys' fault. Le Leopold is in an inner still? Okay, thanks. Hey, thanks, Pan Punch, man. Like, I really needed that. I, I felt, I, I legitimately felt terrible that I wasn't able to stream as much or work on my stream as much. I always think I'm going to have more free time, but, like, not only does he take a lot of time, but, like, he takes a lot of mental energy, too. And so, like... Jumping into streaming is always like such a thing. So yeah, I I do always err on the side of my son first. And a lot of you guys appreciate that. And I appreciate all of you for appreciating that because it, it would be a lot more stressful otherwise. It'd be a lot more stressful otherwise. You guys are really awesome. Hey, Aikawarzu-chan. Oh, seven. How was your Christmas? And New Year's. Uh, we got Zed a new drum pad. So it's like he can practice with the sets of drums without making a ton of noise. Um, and then we also got him some games. And he's been playing a lot on it. He, he loves that piano, man. I want to start recording pieces of it, showing you guys. It was acceptable. All right, well, fair enough. Is this all of the career agents for me? I have a five career missions. 
Nine of ten career missions. Ten of ten career missions. Five of ten career missions. Okay, so I still have Soldier of Fortune to do. Hey, Ross. Glad you could catch it, too. I'm freaking exhausted measurably from having her home today. Trying to get the house stuff done and balance her needs. Just wanted to make sure you know your freaking boss, Dad. I really, really appreciate it. I'm very thankful that my little dude was able to go to daycare this week. Yeah. Man. The last couple of days have been rough to get my son to, like, want to go to school, you know? Like, how do you get a kid that's been out of school for three weeks to be like, yeah, I want to go to school? He's like, can I have a mental health break day? I'm like, no, not to. What are you talking about? <laughs> Where'd you get that from? Those are far away. Notice how I turned around? Like, so as I was coming this way, he was going that way. My traversal was too high. But then when I turned around and our and our uh, as our arrows get closer and closer into alignment, you'll see he I hit him way better. So this one's also going to be hit really, really easily because our vector is almost perfect. He is like almost zero transversal against me right now. Usually this structure is lockable, and I try to kill it, because I, I like killing rogue drone structures. Thing of mine. But apparently I can't lock this one. Oh, I have a, I have a web. I, I wasn't even using my web. Obviously, when you use a web, it's good to, like, wait a second or two after applying it, so that way it gives them time to slow down, so that way your gun hits pretty hard for a shot. Or just have better... Packing presents, or uh, packing weapons. It's true, but I'm using this as an example to show off these concepts in spite of the fact that I'm in a frigate. Normally, I only would need to apply these kinds of things on like a, if I'm in a 
battleship or something. Ah, there's two more. The second arrow on your ship is your target sector and spot NPC orders by looking at the expiration. Oh, hey, that's good. Newish fan here. Glad to check, catch a live stream. I've played for about 10 months, but this is fun. Uh, thanks. I spent on Omega to solo play and now focus on getting into PvP and find a corp. Awesome! Well, uh, I might be able to recommend one. I mean, obviously we recruit, but depending on where you wanted to go and what you want to do, I could recommend some good options. Faction Warfare is, of course, a great place for new players to learn how to PvP and make some money doing so. Control all control R reloads all of your weapons and, and anything with charges. I'm gonna hold control and just do a bounding box around these things to lock all three of the rats at the same time, and then hold control and click one more time on the tower to lock the tower. Now under normal conditions, obviously you, you can do things with the overview or whatever, but I sometimes like to do the interaction in space just because that's where I have my spatial awareness, right? It's how I know that I need those three guys as opposed to some other three guys or whatever. Take these kinetic missiles to the face! Blood rain! Hey, what's up, V-Rod? Oh, there he is. Hey, there's his pod. Die! Oh, maybe I won't finish all of the career agents today. I guess we can wrap up. We can wrap up this one and we'll do the rest of the um, advanced career agent or advanced combat. So soldier portrait. Next time. I don't know. I need to go to the bathroom. Matter of fact, while it's doing this, I'll be right back.
So I have this, I, this concept that I call the TTD, time to death, right? Which is the amount of time it takes to go from perfectly okay to irrevocably dead, okay? So like if I'm in a plex in a faction warfare system, then my time to death is approximately 20 to 30 seconds, right? That's how long, like if as soon as I walk away from the computer to go AFK, somebody jumps into the system, immediately descans me, immediately warps to me, lands, activates the gate and gets in there. We'll say 20, 20 seconds to a minute is your time to death. That's how long you get to not pay attention and not just lose your ship by some bad, bad experience or something like that, right? So this is why I like to go to the bathroom while in warp. Because when you're in warp, you have the longest time to death pretty much anywhere in EVE besides getting yourself into a specific safe spot. Like, if you burn way off in a plex, the time to death on a, in a, it, when you're way burned off in a plex is huge because the person can't warp to you directly. They have to go to the plex and then they have to burn after you. And if you're going fast, then they'd have to catch up with you. So the time to death in that scenario is extraordinarily long. But if I'm just if I'm just doing my normal day-to-day -day stuff, I will often take my short break while in warp. Because if you initiate warp and you make sure you're getting into warp, you know, don't do this with like a freighter that's still trying to get into warp or something like that. But like with that frigate, I was able to hit warp and then walk away, right? knowing that I have the entire warp time, the jump, and 30 extra seconds from my cloak timer from jumping before I have to do anything. So I have a good minute to minute and a half uh, in my time to death for any given warp. And actually, a freighter, ironically enough, is better for this because once the freighter's in warp, you're basically safe, or at least... There's nothing you can do to be any safer for like the next two minutes. All right, that one's good. So there you go. That's my time to death. I try to keep that number in mind, or I try to keep that time in mind at all times. It also keeps track of, like, how stale information is, right? Does one often get PvP killed in high sec with my Sinesis or T1 haulers? I haven't had the pleasure so far. In low sec, it's a very different story. Uh, yeah, no, um, unless you're doing something dumb or have done something to increase your, your, your temptation profile, no, you're not going to get ganked in high sec. You're not going to get ganked in high sec in a combat ship, unless it's like a marauder. Uh, if you're going to get ganked in high sec, it's either going to be in a mining ship or a hauling ship. And if it's going to be a hauling ship, it's probably going to be because you put way too much isk in a hauling ship, right? These people are business people after all. Like, there are definitely some people that will go and kill a venture just to kill a venture. In which case, if you're getting harassed that much, get the hell out of Kaldari space, I would say. But, um, like, the vast majority of what you think of as high sec ganking is because somebody has on their ship something that's more valuable, significantly more valuable, than it would take to destroy that ship. And that's when they kill you. So, you know, if you're not carrying around a, a large amount of stuff, if you're in a combat ship, if it's m more of a nuisance to kill you than it is to just let you go, then, you know, Billy Gr Gr Gruff style, you know, oh, there's such a much fattier target coming soon. You better, you better wait for them. Also, Mimitar space. What's wrong with Mimitar space? Are people me? Oh yeah, that's right. There has been like increased ganking going on in, in Mimitar space, hasn't there? Isn't that what we were looking at the other day?
Uh, what about a really valuable kill for just a kill mount? The thing is, is that you got to remember, these guys, they have to already be set up. And they are already using, and they're using suicide ganking tools. So to them, they're spending a certain amount of money, guaranteed, in order to get the thing. So, like, maybe if it's me, they would gank it just to be like, ha I ganked Ash! But, like, chances are, if you just see a thorax, you're not gonna, like, no one's gonna gank that. Yeah, 200, 100 to 200 million. If you have less than 100 to 200 million in value on your ship, you should not get ganked at all, unless you're, like, an adventurer. Yes, there are some people that gank because they're aboard. However, those people do gank more mining ships than other types of ships. And while that is true, the vast majority of actual ganking that you need to be worried about is going to be because they have a, a financial motivation. People put a lot more of effort into something that has a financial motivation than something that they're doing just for funsies. This is also why putting tank on your hauler is so good. It doesn't necessarily like stop them from ganking you. Obviously enough catalysts will get you, but um, it's like, I like to say like, it's why you lock your door when parking your car in a shady neighborhood. Obviously if somebody wants to break into your car, they're going to, but you lock your door so that way, maybe the person next to you who didn't lock their door gets broken into instead. Use your civilian light missile launcher to destroy the... Okay. But this ship doesn't have launchers. Thinking haulers is a good way to get ganker salt. That's true! That is very true. Uh, civilian light. 1MN, overdrive injector, nope, that's remote, small shield, inject skill, all right, and let's go. Isaac ganking also mostly happens around set routes, yeah, that's true. In particular, like, 0.5 systems. But again, mining is that one time where, like, it's kind of all bets off. There's always people that are willing to go and kill a miner just because. So keep an eye out. Losek isn't even ganking, though, because, like, it doesn't... Doesn't cost me anything to kill you in low sec. Wait. Am I supposed to have missiles? Oh, I do. Yeah, sitting in Udama for a day, and you'll see organized ganking operations. That's true. It, and it and it's worth noting, like, a lot of people ask these sorts of questions. There's so much about EVE that's just like, go out there and see it for yourself, man. Like, you want to understand the ganking that goes on? Go watch Udama for a day. Just check it out. You want to know what Losec is like? Just, you know, grab a Corvette and check it out. I had somebody kill one of my alts because the character was old. So the funniest one I had was that I was warping my freighter in. I jumped my Weber through to Uedama. My webbing ship is actually pretty fancy. It's a daredevil with a double Kaldari Navy webs. I think it is. So I jump my daredevil through and I zero up on the gate. And as my freighter's coming to warp in, one of the there's apparently a ganker on the gate who decides that he was impatient and so takes a pot shot at my daredevil, thinking that he'll be able to kill it. 
fails to kill it, I jump back through the gate and then just immediately warp the, the freighter to the station, web it off, and then warp dock up and walk away for an hour. <laughs> Ah! Why did it undock? I thought I stopped it. Seems like ganking of miners have decreased a lot since the barge rework. No more cargo expanders and rigs needed. Uh, yes and no. The thing is, is that, like... Uh, I'll put it... Uh, ganking miners is one of those things that people do to relieve angst as well. But yes. I cannot stress enough, if you don't like to get ganked, being outside of uh, Kaldari space is a huge gain. But, you know, nothing nothing ever will beat having eyes one jump out. Period. Period. No amount of strategy, no amount of defenses, no module in the game will beat having a scout. Ganky miners also done to hinder your com competitors' efforts at collecting minerals. It's true, but also, like, I'll put it this way. The, uh, there's a lot of people that do the, the mining ganking that are hostile to mining itself, right? Like, there's a, there is an actual philosophy that, like, players get sucked into, tricked even, into doing mining because they think that that's what's good. And so by killing them, they're trying to free them from this idea that mining is a good pastime. And they're trying to show them the better game, which is their game, the PvP, because this game is all about PvP. That's all it is about, right? Mining is not what this game is about. Mining is just a tool to get stuff. This is from their perspective, of course. But, you know, the, the, you do see this almost like self-righteous mentality when it comes to, like, they're saving the miners by ganking them. Starting as solo, I've spent the first few months making safe locations all along the main routes and near gates. It's quite easy to descan and move safely most of the time now. Amy, I like that idea. I will caution you, though. It doesn't matter where your bookmark is. When you jump in, if you're if you're starting out at zero, like you just jumped in and so you're not moving at all, there is no such thing as passive alignment. It doesn't matter where your bookmark is. You will align everywhere in the entire solar system at the same speed regardless of what it is and where it is because you're stopped you have zero vector mining is no joke that's true now yes ganking ice mining is definitely a territory thing for sure there's not enough so ice ice belts in high sec stay around for a long time they're they slow to mine them all and they're kind of rarer so like owning them by being making the area hostile to anyone who isn't you is definitely definitely a thing what am i supposed to do here bring the hostage situation to an end i know no such thing is safe we'll keep it no what i'm saying is is that like i've seen this before where people try to put up like passive aligned bookmarks that doesn't exist now, what a safe is really good for is the opposite, right? So if you need to warp, if you need to go to a gate and you don't know if it's being camped, warping to your safe on the gate is a good way to get eyes on the gate and out of alignment of any potential bubbles in Nullsec or whatever. That's when those bookmarks come in handy, super handy. Is uh, Now, the one thing that you do want is that any of these stations that you come out of, if you want to burn out for a while, this is actually a really bad example because I'm coming out at such an extreme angle, but like undocking from a station like this. Aren't there still some static ice belts there? there so the ice belts are static, but there's not enough ice anymore. So like imagine if like it used to be that there was five systems in a constellation and there was five ice belts and the most that any constellation could have is one, right? So now those five ice belts are distributed to those five systems and Bob's your uncle, you're done. But now it's those five sites 
with three ice belts. So at any given time, two of those five systems won't have an ice belt. And when one of these three gets finished, it'll get recycled and then go to either the same system or one of the two other systems. I'm pretty sure that's how they changed ice mining. Yeah, Amy, it's great for watching from a distance. But, okay, so I'm going to undock here, right? Gas mining is really good. I'm going to check my vector. I still see, like, my vector is way different than I would expect. So I'm just going to go like this, and I'm going to double-click out in space, like right there. And now we're going to go and burn. So I would do this with any station that you're planning on using a lot of. And, you know, obviously getting a micro warp drive or something like that would be way better. I need thermodynamics. I need thermodynamics. Oh my god. Where's thermodynamics? What? Five point eight million isk. Okay, fine. I still have that million free SP to use. Uh I'm I could be totally wrong. I could be totally wrong with that whole ice mine thing. But I have like a inkling of an ex of a rem memory of that cuz like they've done that to a lot of other things. I'm pretty sure they did that with belts too. Cuz I I remember having this exact same explanation before. But it's possible that I'm just thinking about the anomalies. Okay, so, uh, shoot, I'm 95 away from there? Hold on. How far away am I from these ships? That's what really matters. 139. Okay. So, 144, 145, 146. The minimum warp distance in EVE is 150. However, that's not the minimum actual warp distance. That's the minimum distance that you can warp to something. But you can warp at range. So like right now I'm 160 kilometers from this thing, but I could actually warp to it at 100 and I'd land 60 off of it. So I'd actually be only warping, you know, uh, 160 minus 100, so 60, eh, eh, no, no, 100? I don't even remember. Either way, 60? I'd be traveling 60. Yes, I'd be traveling 60 kilometers. <laughs> I can math. Anywho, um, so what I'm going to do here is I'm going to right click on my, I'm going to open up my uh, radial menu on my own ship, then go to plus, and then down here to bookmarks, save location. We can call it, uh, what is this station? Six, four, oops. Six, four, insta. Undock and then set it to never to expire. So now I can just uh, warp to one of these wrecks. You're correct with the ice. No idea what the spawn rate is in high sec, but belts respawn in about four hours in null. Yeah, you'd be warping 100 off, or you'd be traveling 60. Whatever. I, I had a 
I had a brain malfunction. So now, here's the thing. If you warp to this structure, or this station, you're going to land on the docking ring, which is way out here. Uh, not optimal, right? So, this far in, like, I'm always going to be in the docking ring, right? Like, chances are, even if I, like, even if I had some jitter in my warp range, because you have a two and a half kilometer jitter on your warp, right? So if you warp to a station, then you have the radius of the station plus up to two kilometers away. That's why you can land on a station and not be able to immediately dock. Because you actually land outside of its docking range because of that. But if you make this bookmark here, in, well inside of the docking ring, so if I do this again and I go insta-dock, you know, 4-6 insta-dock, now I can go, I can, now let's test it. I can dock up. I'm going to undock. Now, when I undock, I have a session change timer. That session change timer lasts for about 10 seconds. Sorry. Yeah, the session change timer lasts 10 seconds, and I have an invulnerability timer that lasts a little bit longer. So before I can get scrammed, I'm going to instantly warp, and boom, I'm off. So did you see how fast I warped there? It's because that this was in alignment with me. So even if there was somebody there to try to scram me, chances are I would have gotten off in time, right? Likewise, like let's say if I go to this moon... Uh, let's say I go to well yeah if I just warp to the station itself check it out if I warp to the station itself yeah it's, it's when you must absolutely dock right away that you land two kilometers if you look hold on look at this I landed 1.7 kilometers away so I landed a thousand meters away. This is not enough to dock, guys. If I was in a crane, a tornado will have killed me by now, right? Like it's, you have, like there are, there are people who will camp these things where that is the difference. So, whereas if I warp back to this, now you can see this is 183. So we're going to warp at 20. I try not to warp to bookmarks at zero, just because anytime you warp to a bookmark at zero, you might expose the exact location of the bookmark to other people. I tend to not like to do that. So now, if I do the exact same warp, but to my other bookmark, in fact, in order to find that bookmark, what I'm going to do is I'm going to hit the L hotkey. And then that pulls this up, but I'm going to pop this out open in window. These are my locations in this system. So you can see I've got my Insta dock and my Insta undock. Okay. So I can warp to my Insta dock. Now here's the kicker I can go set destination, autopilot. That's how you do it, guys. That's how you land in an insta dock this is one of the two times that you actually use autopilot okay let's show that again what i do is i can be anywhere else i can be at the sun let's go to the sun watching a guy reuse a bookmark three or four times snuck on it cloaked and waited for him to come back again exactly Never be predictable. Never be predictable. Okay. So I want to dock at the State War Academy, and I don't want people to kill me. So I'm going to hit Set Destination, right? But I'm not going to warp to it, because if I warp, if I warp to it, I'll end up two kilometers from it. So I'm going to warp to my Insta dock. But as soon as I hit that, now I hit autopilot. If I hit autopilot, it'll warp to 10 kilometers away and then try to burn in. 
but I've already given it a warp to warp to zero on that bookmark. So it will land on the bookmark. And the way autopilot works is that right now it's trying every single tick to make the autopilot function. So it's like, oh, well, am I, am I able to dock? No. Uh, can I warp? No. So then it just sits there. But the first tick, the first tick that you're out of warp, like magic, it docks. This is something that's happening independent of your computer's speed of the situation. So that's why this is like, that is far superior to any amount of like manually attempting to dock. In fact, another cool thing that you can do is what I like to do is light a Sino. If I light a Sino on a station, I'll set autopilot to that station and then hit the autopilot button and then walk away. Yeah, great in Jita. You, you should use this every single time in Jita, for sure. I still have missiles instead of guns. I wonder if that's going to be a problem. Why are they killing so many things here? I feel like something very suspicious is going on. I warped to this beacon and landed 20 kilometers off the beacon. Did I? Seriously, am I just warping to zero all the time? Or am I just confused? Did Concord just call me an egger? Fucking prick. Concord is the true enemy of all Empyreans. Is there a capsular daily da damage daily? Uh. Mine, scan, destroy non capsuliers. In a moment, we're going to request the pirates relocate hostages from the prison facility. You should see them up ahead. Do not fire on anyone or anything. Your only objective is the safe rescue of the hostage. Sit tight. Move in, rescue the hostages. Go, go, go. Curse your sudden but inevitable betrayal. Uh, are those shuttles they're killing? That's even weirder. And let's go. Starting over. Uh, yeah, a little bit. <clears throat> Mazes with doors that you have to hack. They've done stuff like that before. Big money in what? Wait, what? There's a gate perch. Oh, selling gate per, per, uh, gate perch bookmarks. Yes. Use the stasis weapon fire to corner a pirate and interrogate him. Just in case you really want me to do that with the civilian stasis web of fire, I'll grab that. Sometimes they care. Hmm. 
Those are all Amar shovels. But it's not for kill marks. What the hell is it for? What a weird thing to do. Get out of here, Edgar. Whatever. Yeah, I dislike the next mission. It's better than it used to be, but it doesn't teach a player how to tackle. Yeah, that's why you would need, like, those scenario-based training like I was talking about. Right, and that's actually one of the things that, like, I've talked about before when it comes to good tutorializing. What, and I think that it might do this now a little bit in the NPE, but, like, it should give you a weapon that can't track them and then be like, oh, look, you can't hit him. Fine, come back. And then they give you a web and then you put on the web and then you go and you web him and then suddenly you can hit him. And they're like, see, look, webbing helps you hit things that you couldn't hit otherwise. And you're like, oh, okay, cool. This mission used to tell players that Concord Kill them? What? That's crazy. Kill the terrorist leader inside the pleasure hub. And it gave me a cormorant. Wait, no. It will give me a cormorant. Let's go. Yeah, I like your idea about webbing the untrackable target. That that type of scenario would need to be simulated. Exactly. Well, that's my point. Is that like, what if the scenarios you are a pilot in BTAC are? Your job is to grab and scram this dude long enough for people to attack you or to go and kill it rather than like in the MPE where they're like, OK, scram the guy. Now you die. Like, it'd be cool if it's like, no, grab the dude. Hold him. Hold him. Nah, boom. Ah, yeah, good job. Like, you know, like that's that'd be so much cooler. Like you have to spiral in correctly. That's the thing about the scenario. You could have them fail the scenario over and over and over again. You can have an easy, medium, and hard mode version of it, right? What if there's one where you have to spiral in correctly to get the webs on? Otherwise, they'll track you. It's kind of what the Abyss does, but like it needs to be more on the nose than the Abyss does. Some of those shuttles have stuff in them. They're baiting new bros, which is a bannable action. Oh. Well, those, uh, yeah. Oh, I love this fucking structure. This mission is actually kind of gnarly. It can be gnarly. Cause that, don't they don't they warp disrupt you? Like if you don't get them, you're just screwed. Yeah, look, I'm disrupted by the leader. So if I don't kill him, I'm just done. It's a huge step up in in danger and difficulty than any of the other. Uh, missions in this in the basic combat track. I might be done with high sec. I'm I don't like not being able to freely attack rude people. It's true. Like it, it is a big piece of it. 
right? Like, low sec has the advantage of being able to take matters into your own hand. Okay, well, you know what? That's cool. We'll just go after the terrorist leader then, since... No, you know what? That trainee is doing as much damage as the leader is. I have to fucking kill him. Thank God for passive recharge on shields, huh? Oh, I, did I get outside of scram range from the terrorist leader? That, that's handy, actually. Not that I'm going to need to now, but... There we go. Now I'm starting to chunk through them. It would be nice to see Speed would make burners a separate mission type. They're pretty fun to run in a group. Well, I mean, that's... You mean, like, so that way you don't have to deal with all of the normal missions in order to get burner missions? Yeah. I mean, I could see that. But at the same time, I think that they're... There is something to say be said about like the fact that you can have multiple mission runners and be like, oh, well, a burner mission comes up and then like one person's able to run it or whatever. And so it's like, OK, yeah, like there's a sort of coordination that comes from that because of that, like one dude ends up with extra burner missions that they aren't going to run. And one person runs burner missions, but doesn't want to go through all the bu bullshit to get them like there is synergy in that. But it isn't very straightforward, and it does have its own problems. It sort of feels like either I get my revenge or let it go like a mature person, or I don't play, as it actively bothers me when I know when people know all I can do is gank, and we both lose at best. And that well, that's the thing is that like I don't think about the ship explosion as being the only result right like we're both following a complex set of rules and in order to try to get victory over each other the fact you know physical violence is only, between the two of us is the only is only one way and so without the ability to have physical violence what how else do you quote unquote win um and what does that look like what does winning and losing look like and that's what high sec is really all about but like that's the whole point is that it's the oppressive nature of high sec it's safe the rules make you safer because the rules having more rules makes it so that there's less things that can happen out of the blue but not understanding those rules will make you still exposed and uh it can be oppressive right like when what you want to do is opposed to the rules then suddenly those rules suck And that is it. That's all of the career agents, guys. So next time we will pick it up and we will do something else. Uh, I'll probably keep an eye on the, the YouTubes. I'll put out a poll either at the beginning of the episode tomorrow or sometime today uh, to figure out like whether or not people want me to focus on a specific thing ahead of time. Make sure to jump on the Discord to get notifications and to come say hi. Um, and of course, if you want to come join us in game, where the convocation is recruiting for Aderon Robotics for Galente Feder Federation, Mauro for HiSec and other operations, and uh, the Invited for PVP, uh, sorry, Insurgency content. 
if you, you are just checking out EVE Online, or if you're returning to EVE and you have not gotten your free million sp skill points, please use the link down below, or the one that's about to appear in chat, for uh, a link to get your own free million free uh, million sp skill points. That's four, 20 to 40 days of tra training, depending on if you're an Alpha or an Omega, uh, and it helps support the channel. I really do appreciate it, and I thank all of you guys. I have been Asherathi. I've been playing this game since 2010, talking about it since 2012, and I'm here to put Eve into context for you, my fellow Empyreans. Thank you guys so much for coming, checking it out, watching the stream, liking the stream, you did like, and commenting on the stream, you did comment. And, uh, yeah, and an extra special thanks to my top sp supporters, which are... Abyssus, Warzu Chan, Ar Arcus Earling, Belligerent Neckbeard, Black Rose Noble, Dijon Lamont, Drake, Federation Frontline, Gunai, J. Kuhn, Lumi, Menai Space Monkey, Milk, Not Just Fun, Punchinello, Seeds of Plenty, Serenalum with No Eyes, Shodanar, Siliana Valesh, Tijen Tijen, Nephilim, Grendel, V Rod Cruiser, Lianti Leepuk, Zalmex, Zero, as well as my Immortal Tier supporter, N745 MPSI, Eridanika the Queen, Ebo Leet, Erlidus, May, Malik Starfire, Murkuton, Nihilum, LM1, Sheesh, and Rid. Thank you guys so much. Extra special thanks to Punchinello for throwing in all of those clan boss keys yesterday to take out hard bo clan boss. I will be, I have been Asherathi. I will see you guys tomorrow, hopefully. But until then, I'll see you in space. City